Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, since I'm waiting on that epoxy to uh, dry on that Bakelite, and again, that's just a uh, a test patient. Thought I'd play around with something and do something a little bit different. Um, you guys probably followed the uh, Emerson R167 electrical restoration that I completed. Still got to do the cabinet. I got to I got to get started on these uh, cabinets soon. I got like three or four need to be stripped and uh, toner, some uh, veneer work, etc. So um, we'll get started on those once I get some of these electrical restorations behind me. One thing that was really intriguing though about this particular design, they talk about the miracle tone chamber. And um, it's pretty cool. So um, you can see it here in the advertisement, which is really neat, but uh, Again, they're saying they're using the mechanical design basically to improve the tone or, in my opinion, just keep more of an even frequency response, you know, across the uh, the speaker output. So uh, what I thought I would do is uh, take some time and I'm going to uh, hook up a, a known signal source and we'll get into the details of uh, what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it here in a bit. I'm going to just uh, use the speaker output not mounted in the chassis itself. We'll use my uh, sound level meter at a uh, known distance and then I'll put it back in the cabinet and measure the frequency response. So we'll compare the results. Again, I'm in the workshop. All the surroundings, the acoustics will you know, not make this a scientific study, but uh, you know, just for fun, it'll be interesting to see. So I'll try to position the speaker in the same orientation that it would reside in the radio. And again, find a static location for the sound level meter. So we have consistency there as well. And then uh, we'll plot these numbers out. I'll uh, put them into a spreadsheet. We'll look at the, um, this, the raw speaker output. And then we'll look at the uh, results through the uh, Miracle Tone Chamber. And uh, just see what those differences are, if any. Okay, the uh, method and procedure I'm going to probably try first. I'm going to use my uh, AM transmitter. And I'll go to a uh, clear spot on the dial. Somewhere around uh, maybe a thousand kilocycles here. And I'm going to uh, use a uh, known signal generator source. And actually, uh, I have an audio generator. I may use it, or I may elect just to use my uh, iPhone. I've got an app on there, and um, I'll show that in just a minute, and uh, generate the various test signals that we'll uh, test for. And then again, as I move forward, I'll just uh, jot those down, and then I'll dump them into a spreadsheet. We'll create a graph and take a look at the uh, results here. So let me uh, get things hooked up and just see if I want to go that route and broadcast through my uh, AM transmitter or uh, elect just to uh, hook up directly uh, to the radio on the output side of the uh, audio output tube and uh, deliver the signal in that form and fashion. Okay guys, here's uh, what I'm going to uh, use. Um, I've got my AM transmitter hooked up and uh, this is my uh, audio input to the uh, AM transmitter. I'm going to feed that from my iPhone. Again, I'm using the S generator um, that's uh, available through uh, Scorpion ZZZ's lab. And you can see I've got a test signal at uh, 600 hertz right now. Here's a, uh, it's got different features. I can do sine waves, uh, triangle waves, white noise, uh, all different things. So I've got a, a known amplitude set here. 
in I've got my uh, sound meter on. I'm going to find a better location here for the sound meter and get it back about arm's length or just a bit more and make that static. So um, what I'm going to do, uh, you can see I've got the speaker itself positioned in a known location so when I put it back in the cabinet I'll do my best just to mirror that same location so we can see the differences on the frequency response this created by that miracle tone chamber that they call out so I think I got the angle right and again I've got a uh, position here earmarked for reference and then um, I'll decide again where I want to put the uh, sound level meter and I'll just capture the uh, readings there, the uh, decibel readings, record those for the various test frequencies that uh, we'll use here to uh, make the measurements. Again, not scientific, just for fun, but it uh, will be interesting to see if there's a uh, notable difference is illustrated here in the original advertisement back from the, uh, I think, mid-30s or so. So looking at the results of the test, again the blue line indicates the uh, speaker in raw form outside the cabinet. The red line indicates the speaker back in the cabinet, leveraging that miracle tone chamber design. Again, you can see here the big difference in amplitude to starting above 315 hertz and that big peak there uh, from about 400 to 1000 hertz. And then a big drop off there around 2000. So Notable difference, and again, not scientific, but uh, interesting at least. Thought I would share that with you guys. Thanks again uh, for watching uh, this video, subscribing to my channel. It's much appreciated.